Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a potential resolution to one of the bigger mysteries when it comes to the existence of very strange massive stars on the outskirts of our galaxy. In this particular case, answering a simple question, how can a really massive and a somewhat young star exist in the middle of nowhere, often in the regions where there are no other stars nearby and there is no gas to create these stars? And in many of these cases, these stars seem to possess properties that make them sort of impossible. So let's talk a little bit more about this, but let's start with the description of the actual problem. With I guess this star right here making a pretty good example. So as you sort of see from the simulation, we have a relatively massive star with what seems to be quite a lot of different planets and other objects in orbit, but it's also pretty far away from the actual galactic disk where a lot of other stars seem to be present. A lot of similar stars have been discovered in the last few years. And in most cases, these stars are only a few million years old. For example, the star we're discussing today, the star known as HD 93521, has been recently determined to be approximately 5 million years old. And though it might sound old, that's nothing compared to our own sun, which is approximately 5 billion years old. And that's not unusual for really massive objects. This particular star is at least 17 times the mass of our sun. So in this case, it's obviously expected to burn through all of its materials really quickly and then become most likely some sort of a black hole. For this star specifically, it's expected to start going through its final stages and turn into a black hole in approximately 3.3 million years from now. Okay, well, none of this is a problem so far, except for maybe one thing, its location. And also, how did it actually get there? So if we were to try to calculate its motion across the night skies, we would discover that it just did not have enough time to leave the galaxy. Or in other words, if we were to trace back its motion, we would find out that it most likely took it way, way longer to get to this location from the actual galactic disk. And obviously there is also no explanation for how exactly or why exactly the star even left the galaxy. It could have been kicked out by something, for example maybe a nearby supernova or possibly passing next to some sort of a black hole. At this point, none of this is known. But more importantly, of course, is the origin of this star. What exactly or how exactly was this star created? And to answer this is a little bit difficult. Mostly because every other star that seems to be relatively massive like this one and seems to be relatively bright and just as powerful has always been found in the middle or very close to some kind of a molecular cloud. For example, there are so many of them in the Carina Nebula or in the nearby vicinity. So these types of clouds are definitely some of the possible origins of these stars. You may actually want to check out one of the previous videos about the Homunculus Nebula and Eta Carina, one of the most mysterious stars in the galaxy, that sort of talks more about these stars and their origin and their evolution. But that's basically where we expect these stars to be. Except, in this case, it's not. It's thousands and thousands of light years away from the region. In this particular case, it's approximately 3600 light years away from the region where we would expect these stars to exist. And if this particular star were to travel from that region to where it is right now, at the speed that it's traveling at, it would take it at least 30 million years. As a matter of fact, approximately 39 million years. And so in this case, something doesn't add up. If this star traveled for 39 million years, and it's only about 5 million years old, what's happening here? How could this object be created, and what created it? Well, in the past, scientists tried to explain this several ways. For example, maybe there's just a lot of hidden gas all over the place. Maybe there are these chunks of gas um, somewhere outside of the galaxy, most likely thrown out by, for example, the eruption from the black hole, that eventually coalesces and creates these stars once in a while. And since there is quite a lot of gas that's already sort of missing, in the sense that there should be a lot mass detectable around the galaxy, it to some extent does make sense. But that's not a particularly exciting or actually not a particularly satisfactory explanation because there are no signs of this gas anywhere in the vicinity. There should be some signs being detected by other telescopes. And because these stars are also some of the brightest stars in the vicinity, all of this gas uh, should become somewhat visible. I mean, that's sort of how nebula work to begin with. But once again, nothing. There's nothing near them. But that's the major way stars are made, so what exactly happened here? Well, here the scientists decided to employ something a little bit different. And in this case, they employed a lot of the extremely accurate data from the Gaia telescope. 
The telescope has been flying around space and creating extremely accurate maps of the nearby stars. And a lot of these observations revealed something that the scientists sort of suspected. On top of being really massive and really bright, this star is also spinning way faster than it should. The average velocity on the equator here is around 430 kilometers per second. That's nearly 200 or over 200 times higher than our sun's spinning velocity. And for such a massive object to spin so fast, something extreme must have happened to it in the past. You might already see where we're going with this. This particular star most likely was two stars. And over time, these two stars most likely merged into one, creating the larger, more massive object that then started to spin so fast. That's the only explanation that seems to sort of currently make any sense. It would definitely explain the spin, but most importantly, it would definitely explain how the star was able to get here to begin with. Two smaller, less massive stars would obviously have much longer lifespans, and so they could be traveling here for possibly 30 to 40 million years before finally combining and turning into a much larger, more massive object. We even have a name for this particular phenomenon that usually results in a bigger star. These objects are known as contact binaries, and there are quite a lot of them out there. With this beautiful creation known as V838 Monocerotis, representing what happens to the two stars when they collide and form into a single star. They first create what's known as Red Luminous Nova, but that's obviously just some of the stars. A lot of stars don't actually go through this, some of them just collide without anything, although some of them collide and create a supernova. Either way though, these types of stars are pretty common. More importantly, the scientists identify at least one other binary star, known as IT Libra, that also seems to be really really far away from the galactic disk, but seems to represent what will become a very similar object to what we have here, a really massive, really bright star that's way too massive to exist in this region, but was created as a result of a collision. Although in case of IT Libra, there is another mystery. One of the stars here, once again, is way too massive to potentially exist in this region, the other one is not. And so in other words, one of the stars seems to be a little bit too young. But at the same time, this already has an explanation in there. These types of stars are sometimes referred to as eclipsing binaries. And in this case, one of the stars is basically just a little bit more massive and is much better at absorbing mass from the other star. And so in other words, there is already a mass transfer in progress. One of the stars became less massive, and the other one became more massive. And that would definitely explain what we're observing from IT Libra. And one of the reasons why these objects are referred to as eclipsing binaries is really because one of the stars here is eventually going to block the light from the other star and is going to be very periodic. These particular systems have been also discovered pretty much all over the place. But looks like sometimes some of these systems somehow make it to the outskirts of the galaxy. How they do so is still unknown. But once there, they first either turn into eclipsing binaries or contact binaries, and then it becomes one single object, one single massive star, which eventually goes supernova and produces a black hole, or maybe a neutron star. Or at least that's the explanation for now. But it is a pretty reasonable explanation, or at least that's the explanation for now. Uh, I guess it's the best explanation that doesn't seem to break too many laws of physics. But I guess until we learn more, or until we discover some other unusual unexplained star somewhere out there, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.